Thank you so much, dear colleagues. Let's see what kind of hopes have been lived up and what tendencies do we have. First of all, uh, it's still the year of the target therapy. A new and new uh, kinase inhibitors of the first, uh, of the second, third generations in case of standardized cases of molecular genetic uh, disturbances in the GFAR, uh, EGFAR uh, mutation rat, it's uh, being studied uh, quite actively, and other translocations. What studies have been very interesting, first of all, it's uh, the attempt of the total molecular genetic testing with the use of the serum. Uh, we are waiting for the results, and this studies showed us that we are moving in the right direction. Uh, we studied the samples of the tumor tissue and uh, serum, 282 tested serums for the main molecular genetic defects. The results uh, are very promising in uh, the tissue. Uh, we detected in 21% molecular genetic disturbances in uh, serum 27, and uh, the time for diagnosis uh, was less. And concordance, uh, according to the main uh, mutations, uh, turned out to be very high. Only according to the definition uh, ROS1, we have a, number, a great number of questions still remained. Uh, EGFR mutation and discordance is approaching 100% as to ALK and rough mutation, depending on the tests, from 70 to 80%. But we have to detect, we can detect, and then uh, the fight that is going on uh, between the representatives of those who uh, uh, support uh, the theory of the consecutive uh, terrorism kinase inhibitors in the EGFR mutation and the strategy of prescribing the drugs with the better results. Here we can see that one of the studies uh, that was reported this year uh, in the clinical practice, uh, the inhibitor of the second generation of uh, it's a very good uh, values as to the overall survival rate. And it's uh, the general uh, point uh, where these two strategies, uh, they are compared to the uh, prescription of the inhibitors of the third generation if the mutation in the uh, 19 uh, exome. Uh, it's a very good result, although I think uh, that uh, there may be somebody who will lose Let's look what's happening. If l with uh, Ralutsuzumab or Gefitinib chemotherapy, they have very serious advantages as to uh, even uh, as to the uh, uh, progression-free survival. Uh, if uh, we have the changes in the uh, seven uh, nine uh, seven hundred ninety mutation. Uh, and if uh, we can use uh, monothyrosine kinase inhibitors, let's look at the combined treatment with the shift transition to simartinib. Every second person will have the survival rate 34 months, and consecutive therapy may achieve only 26, 28 months of survival rate. We will follow the development of this. Uh, MAT mutation potentially is well known, and the attempts are made to overcome this variant. We can't say that there are a breakthrough, but combination with osimertinib and selumetinib gives us hope. First of all, I circle the patients who previously received osimertinib. 
It's not uh, blue lines where uh, the mutation 790, they didn't receive the tyrosine kinase inhibitors of the th third generation, the frequency of 75% and 17%. It's uh, something because we didn't have any alternative. And this figures so they're similar to the situation when there is, uh, there is mutation, but no T790 mutation. Uh, one more interesting area is uh, the control of the disease of this mutation in the exon 20. It's not T790M mutation, and it happens in 5% of population. And all in all, we have 11, 12% of this mutation. The topic is not uh, uh, it's uh, worth doing. Uh, uh, there are promising results. Uh, of anti-tumor activity and uh, dis uh, uh, de progression-free survival median amounts to 8.1 per one month. What else? Red mutation. Uh, this mutation is still uh, under our control. Uh, the next generation of inhibitors, uh, blue, 667, and let's look what kind of good results we achieve. The response rate, 60%, control of the disease, 100%. We shall wait how long this control will last. But all the same, in all the, uh, we think that uh, there is uh, the progress forward, and we have very good prospects uh, for to application to our new uh, uh, regimen. And CRK, you know this, uh, uh, we are moving, uh, we are applying a great deal of efforts to overcome this kind of mutation. Uh, the, the, it's a preparation for testing, wild world testing, there are universal substances. They are not only for and uh, as CLC, but for capillary uh, thyro th thyroid cancer, breast cancer, uh, application in pediatrics. So this medication is quite effective in antaractinib. Let's look how it's uh, how it acts rather good in case of an SCLC. And even it works if there are metast brain metastases uh, due to uh, the uh, crossing of the blood-brain barrier. Uh, uh, the frequency 54.5, the response rate, uh, for brain metastasis, uh, this figure uh, 54.5% and quite good uh, disease-free survival uh, for more 14.3 month progression-free survival. LK inhibitors, uh, they work very well. The inhibitors of the next generation, uh, they all, uh, they uh, better than crizotinib, uh, or we can use this consecutively if uh, we uh, uh, evaluate overall survival. They are more, they are better even if uh, even uh, uh, comparing to EGTF and give it us and. Alectinib uh, shows quite satisfactory results as, results as a first line overall survival 35 months, the median of the survival. According to Japanese population, the median turns out to be the similar progression free survival 43.7 months. And uh, uh, overall survival median. Uh, we used to think uh, that uh, in case of uh, EGFR and tyrosine kinase inhibitors, uh, we talk about the median of survival three years. Here we have a better figures on crizotinib in brackets, 84, says 84 percent. And later this group received alectinib, uh, the overall survival rate, uh, the median. 34.1 months, but uh, the curves, uh, they are going apart. And I think uh, the overall survival median we haven't achieved, but uh, it's uh, uh, maybe the reason for the choice of the inhibitors of the second generation. 
brigatinib, the second generation inhibitors, anti ALK. Okay, it demonstrates quite promising results. If it's prescribed as the first line, uh, we are still waiting for the final result. We haven't achieved the median. Uh, it's uh, now it goes uh, as, uh, uh, in, uh, in the schedule of alectinib, uh, but the best results are being achieved as the second line in case of progression. The results that has been proved. 16.7 month, uh, uh, it's uh, still the best result. It's uh, the medication of choice in uh, the second line therapy after progression on crizotinib. Uh, Rose one, uh, everything is uh, quite clear here. Uh, Crizotinib can control this disease, progression-free survival 21 months. But look at this at antrictinib. It turns out it turned out uh, to control ROS1 positive patients and progression-free survival median uh, quite 19.12 uh, uh, months. And let's uh, look uh, at the beginning of treatment, uh, whether there are brain metastases or not. If there are no brain metastases, metastases progression-free survival median, 26.3 months. It's a two-year uh, progression-free survival. Uh, the disease is under control. The results are very promising. At least uh, uh, going to uh, turn into immunotherapy, we got used to the fact that if we see patients with active mutations, immunotherapy as a rule, uh, we preserve as uh, the means of, uh, as a last resort because uh, there are no convincing data uh, uh, in effectiveness of human therapy uh, in patients with active mutations, but. Uh, combined approaches to treatment by immunotherapy is combined with chemotherapy, maybe not, uh, and antigenesis uh, therapy. Um, this issue may be reconsidered. It may be convincing and surprising. You can see the graph where EGFR positive patients and more than two thirds of them, they received uh, the First and the second generation inhibit uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. They progressed. Uh, they responses to the, uh, responded to this uh, combined therapy. Uh, Progression-free survival approximately two years, and the median uh, that uh, received uh, etuzumab with belitizumab amounts to 65 percent. And uh, as we got used uh, in immunotherapy, there is a kind of a plate, uh, and patients uh, are likely to demonstrate quite uh, good benefit from this therapy. In this combination, it's not unclear uh, what kind of uh, medication played the important role, or maybe it's a combination that uh, uh, brought about these results. The, there are groups of patients where we consider different variants of treatment depending on the localization of the metastasis. And in this case, uh, we see uh, the overall survival in case of brain metastasis. I'm still not sure how to act. If, you, if I consider immunotherapy uh, in case of brain metastasis, what kind of regimens are more effective? Uh, and these subgroup analysis are very important. Now we are talking about uh, about non uh, uh, squamous cell lung cancer. Let's look at overall survival rate in these uh, difficult patients, more than two folds higher if uh, combined immune chemotherapy is being prescribed. 19 7.7 something month. What are the subgroups of patients? Patients with the liver metastasis because 
these patients demonstrate one of the unfavorable prognosis uh, during the course of the disease. And once again, we can talk about combination of immunotherapy plus chemotherapy and antigenic agents. And there are some prerequisites and scientific justification. In this case, we can see the reliable advantages, 13.3 uh, months against 9.4 months in uh, 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 with the therapy without uh, immunotherapy. 13.3 it's a very good value and the same results we achieved in case of non squamous self uh, lung cancer nivolumab plus chemotherapy uh, as to immunotherapy studies it's an attempt to improve regimens to make them more convenient as an example as uh, the use of nivolumab uh, once in two weeks or with a higher dosage uh, once in four weeks. Luckily, it turned out that the regimens are both effective, it's more convenient, and once again, uh, it's not just a single uh, study uh, about nivolumab. And, uh, uh, there are studies when uh, the dose was tightened uh, according to the weight of a patient, now we have this single protocol and patient received uh, more corrected treatment and overall survival. The longer we uh, so survey this process, uh, the we are more happy in our subgroups, a checkmate. Uh, four year values, so they are better in PDL plus status, where five years survival rate amounts to 25% each fifth patient. We should remember this. If we had an effect on therapy, usually. Uh, it's a two month of treatment and then four months of treatment. If there is an effect up to four years, 58% of patients with the effect, uh, they survive this time. And uh, we are, it's, uh, these results are very promising if uh, we achieve the positive effect. What else? Long term results in case of other medications here. I'm very. Uh, it's very promising figures and another concept, more than 50% expressions of PDL1. It's very serious. It's a good prognostic factor, but it turned out uh, that in the first or second line uh, therapy, we can achieve different results. And this is true if we prescribe uh, pre pimbrolizumab in patients more than 50% of hyperexpression, uh, we can hope for five years survival rate uh, 35%. If we indicate it in the second line, it's 15%. So it's uh, two times uh, advantage, and in case uh, of possibility we should start a unitherapy and it's easier to realize and it gives us better results in medium of time this hyper expression it's 48 or 49 so for 24 months it's the time without progression in patients in patients who uh, received pembrolizumab immunotherapy is moving towards earlier stages and in this case we are talking about the third the third stage uh, incurable uh, stage of uh, lung cancer is 57 percent compared to 43 after one moment chemo and radiotherapy and now we are forming the plateau we can calculate the mediana that can be calculated for four years and it will be about 50 percent and it's about 80 percent of patients who have advantage due to chemo and radiotherapy
So eight out of ten will get advantage and four of them will survive up to four years. The results that uh, really can compete with the surgical uh, results and sub analysis turned out to be quite interesting and it was obvious that uh, it's no, it doesn't matter if it was some partial response or stabilization anyway the patient got advantages compared to placebo also it was shown that earlier start of uh, so it was also significant prognosis factor to get a benefit from immunotherapy and at last immunotherapy aims to the earlier stages to the uh, operable uh, stages and we are talking about a large morphological response when uh, about 10 percent of cancerous cells are vital and the frequency of this morphological response rises uh, due to the therapy and it depends on the therapy, on the immuno, immuno, immunotherapy, and uh, the figure goes up twice. So using different medications, the response can reach up to 45%. And of course, it was completely surprising when we combine immunotherapy and chemotherapy. It's about 80 or 64%, something that used to be completely unreachable. And we are talking about potential uh, unoperable patients into operable and make them possible to get surgery and also a little bit theory new attempts to overcome the resistance to immune uh, oncological medicine so and go anti angiogenic medicines because uh, so it's possible that vascular net can resist immunotherapy but anti angiogenic therapy can uh, maintain and move the balance towards the immunosupporting so, uh, surrounding. And the results, they are the first, but we've got them. It's the time without progression. So it's 5.5 .5 months, and we are looking forward to getting new data. And we are talking about uh, this outcome of resistance. So another uh, interesting direction is the attempt to restore uh, sensitivity of the cancer to immune therapy. And another uh, medicine, it's nivolumab and NKTR214 that can move the immune de desert to actively uh, to, to actively um, uh, well, acting uh, cancer and that can give its own effect and conversion from PDL1 to PDL positive in three weeks. They are associated with a further benefit to the patients. And in the end, I would like to say that uh, the week can say I don't want this, the strong will say I'll try and the stronger seed in this hall. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any questions? May I ask? Konstantin Konstantinovich. So your own opinion. So targeted therapy. So is it the third therapy medicine or will it be sequential? So actually, I don't have this uh, eventual conclusion, but if the patient has some impairment of brain, I've already had my position. Uh, if the patient has 19 exone and positive status, the data will be quite interesting about fotinib but uh, this sequential therapy starting with amazonib uh, is also possible but combined approach traumatizumab biotosumab 
can be the combination of chemotherapy with inhibitors is a very nice and interesting concept. And we've got study of Laurum 2, where Samartinib will be combined with chemo therapy. And I really hope to get very good results in this group. So this combination. Thank you. Tell me, please, in the routine practice, uh, do, do you indicate this regime, combined regime? Yeah, the studies, we started with two months of uh, trazinkinase inhibitors, after which we had a period of rest, so three courses of uh, medicine, and then we got to targeted therapy. We didn't wait for progression. We had planned replacement, and the median of uh, uh, of living without progression is 19 months. It's uh, not the eventual uh, number. It's not the eventual figure. 34 months is the eventual number. So 34 is the total survival rate, and 19, it's quite OK in minimal uh, costs from the governmental side. Thank you. Konstantin Konstantinovich, did it depend on the mutation, the deletion? First of all, yeah, we, we took both 19th and 21st zones, and if I'm not mistaken, the results on 21st uh, zone was similar to 19th. We were thinking about the uh, carriers of the 19th, but actually it turned out uh, to be in the concept of our approach to the patients.